welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple. Come one of the rare few who who is not putting me through time zone time zone hell when it comes to setting things up because same time zone the one and only grace lewis creator of the upcoming gut gun which will be which will be covering t covering tonight and congratulations on hitting on that hitting its um kickstarter goal how are you doing tonight i'm doing good thanks for having me and thanks for the congratulations <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. One of these days, I'm one of these days, I'm going to slip that up and and say congratulation. And it'll be extremely funny when you do. Because mm -hmm. I I like I like that sort of really really bad English from from, from early days. You know, things like a winner is typos you. and mispronunciations are timeless jokes. It's never not funny. But so I'll, I'll start as I usually do in the in the tradition, with the humble beginnings in a sense. So walk me through your first introduction to role playing games and what made it stick. Um, in high school, I had some friends who got into Open Legend. I don't know if you're familiar with that one or oh, not. I'm, I am very familiar with Open Legend. Oh, good. Usually, whenever I say it, people have like the most confused looks in their faces. I will. Um, no I will note this in advance. There is not a there is not a single game that anyone can mention that I am not familiar with in one form or another. So don't, don't make worry me about test that. that. <laughs> oh, ma many have tried. You would not be the first. It's fair. I could just name something a friend is making that's not released anywhere. That's just cheating, though. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is cheating, and I would call you on that. Anyway, um, yeah, I started playing Open Legend in high school um, with friends, and that was a fun time. It was enjoyable stuff with that. Then ended up doing D&D uh, &D later, because that's just what everyone plays, and it's the more accessible thing, so to speak, as far as finding tables goes um and with both experiences i kind of came away frustrated you know mm -hmm. so i uh learned the hard way i'm not into the war game family of rpgs very much um i started looking around and started designing my own stuff that i thought would be fun and looking to other indie designers and getting to stuff they suggested and exploring and Eventually, getting down the road to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the when it comes to those um, explorations, were there were there any um, any en any entries that were standouts for you dur during that transition between just being just being a straight gamer and being a full being a designer? Um. I kind of just got really mad at D&D &D and immediately started designing, so it's not like there was a ton of stuff. It was more, after I started designing stuff, I started like going back, no, I need to read more and play more, and started going back and exploring. Um, one game that I'm particularly fond of um, is uh, Fabula Ultima, which does go more in the gamey direction, but it's like very, very, very well done, very tightly designed. And, it's incredibly impressive. Um, there's also Rhesus is one I'm quite fond of as well. Mm -hmm. um, we like Rhesus. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bunch of stuff in that kind of vein. Um, I'll find like little indie things on itch. Whenever I look around sometimes, that can be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, there was what? You are 100 goblins. Now go save the world. I might have the name slightly incorrect. That one's quite fun. I did a uh, a hack of that one um, with someone. Mm -hmm. um, that was quite enjoyable as well. Yeah. 
and I have a couple of friends who are designing games that are quite fun. You know, it's it's a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, I um, I had act, I was I was already knee deep in in, in indie design bef before I even discovered itch. <laughs> um, oh geez. Although a lot a lot of it is through a lot of it was through various design forums like the like the Forge or Order of the Stick. Which is where I discovered the acronym Peach. Um, please evaluate and critique honestly. Um, That's a very good acronym. I hadn't heard of that before. Yeah, a lot of a lot of home a lot of homebrew. Some some crazier homebrew than others. Um, of co of course, the brilliant insanity that was Dungeons the Dragoning. Which is what happens when somebody decides to say, "I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to throw D and D, World of Darkness, Warhammer, and pla um, Planescape and Seventh C into a blender and make it work." It's a lot. What a blender! And it does. <laughs> it. It's one. It's a. It's a case of. Is it? And everybody thought it would. It wouldn't work because it was released on April Fool's Day. Then they read the thing. <laughs> oh, oh! I I love a good like April Fool's release where the joke isn't the actual thing. The joke is that it's an actual real thing that lasts past April Fools. Mm -hmm. I've pulled one of those before yeah. too. It's a timeless goof. Yeah. Um, I've and of of course of course there's been pl there's been plenty of. Plenty of plenty of releases or homebrews that are that are made just to be a just to be a giant meme, uh, or or just or just dumb builds for certain games like like somebody wanting to be able to be able to wrestle everything, and not not only wrestle everything but when full but when full luchadores techni um, technicos with it. <laughs> nice. Incl including going with one going with one of those old school masks that does that doesn't have a whole lot of exposed face because if if you've seen anything Lucha Libre even pa even passively you know that you n you don't take the mask off. Okay, right. yeah, I'm not too familiar with a lot of that zone. Um... Yeah, and, and wrestling he, in general is a zone I don't know a lot about. I have a friend who is making a wrestling RPG. That's as much as I. Yeah, Lucha Libre is its own is its own beast, and one of the key things is anytime you're on anytime you're in public, you have the mask on. <clears throat> like obviously, obviously in private, take take it off, but but that's the exception now. With Gut Gun, you've you've referred to this as a boomer shooter TTRPG, and yes. that is that is interesting since there's been quite a few throwback shoot there's been quite a few throwback shooters over the last over the last five or six years. Um, a lot of a lot of them do a lot of them the res, the result of new blood trying to figure out new and interesting ways to shit post. It's, yeah. You know, or or just put or just put up um redirect websites, just just because they can. Like, I think one of the earliest cases was waste dot money. <laughs> yep, they had a couple variants on that one. Mm -hmm. Just because David Zemanski wants to be wants to be David Zemanski and David and Dave Oshry want to be giant meme lords, but. When it, but point is, is that there's a lot of variety in what in um what is considered a boomer shooter. I mean, you have you yeah, have there is. you have you have you have some you have some cases that are tr that are a bit more forgiving than than others, and so in some cases that are trying to emulate the likes of Blood, which I loved Blood, but Blood does not love me back. Mm -hmm. uh, or you, or you have, you have, you have ones that lean, lean 
more into more into the PS1 more to the PS1 era visually. Ultra Kill is an example of that, as well as um, Gloomwood. Still waiting on Gloomwood. Uh -huh. So, with Gut Gun, are you is just from just from some of the look of of things? Are you trying to lean into like um, the the original Doom? A little bit. It's a mix of inspirations like Doom, Quake, and then some of the you know like newer stuff like Dusk are definitely inspirations there. Mm -hmm. um, for aesthetic and the type of thing I'm trying to emulate um, in feeling. Mm -hmm. oh. And this idea of using weaponized viscera um, ended up reminding me a bit of um, Scorn. And I'm I'm curious if that was an influence as well. It was not. I have played Scorn, but it wasn't an influence for this. Which is actually surprising that it wasn't, because they do the literal thing I do where they have like weapons attached to your intestines. I'm actually surprised I didn't think of that as a potential connection really. No, I just somehow did that independently. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. Um Well there's there's been cases of a of accidental inspiration in the past. Oh, um, absolutely. Now, with the with that in with that in mind, um, the your obviously this is be this is being done as a, as a solo game that you're splitting into missions and episodes, which is a mm -hmm. good way to dif differentiate that affair. Um. With each with with each mission, is the is the layout and the setup of missions something that's going to be randomly generated through a, through a chart? Not a chart necessarily. Um, it's mostly kind of like a linear, like you'd move forward through rooms. It it's slightly up in the air. I've thought back and forth a little bit about whether or not you could go back to other rooms, but it's also kind of like. There's no mechanical benefit to doing that, so I don't think I will. It's just you keep going forward, and every time you move forward, you roll for a new room, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and you gain progress. Different rooms reward a certain amount of progress towards your progress meter. Um, your progress meter's size depends on your difficulty. Um, once you fill your progress meter for that mission, you beat the mission. Yeah. The basic. Given, given that... The way you describe it kind of reminds me of a um, project in the work called Mullet Mad Jack. Not heard of this one. It is, and it is a bit of an acid trip of a, of a game. The it's not fully out yet; it's just in demo form. The idea the idea is that you have you have this ten second countdown to fi to finish each room before eventually coming to a boss. Oh, so it's inspired by Post Void. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, and because because of the because of how cranked out it is, and because of the timer, um, it ended up remind in this because of that timer, I was reminded of like Crank, which is another bit of glorious insanity. <laughs> yeah, not familiar. You know, this looks interesting. The, but the uh, the. So give, given the given the whole si the whole series of of room setup, which is understandable to do that because doing a solo game that had that had a map like say the maps in the original Doom or j or even just a tile editor in Rise of the Triad might be pushing things a little bit. It might be, yeah. And there's things like I do want to have like an overworld map, so to speak. You know, even like Doom had this where you think the mission, they're not not like the missions. I guess it is the mission select screen. I guess kind of like those I do plan to be doing, but that's more of a flavor thing than anything. You know, mm -hmm. um, just like an art thing. Um, I'm trying to think. Like Rune does kind of make that map a uh, actual mechanical thing but i'm going in the linear direction so i'm not mm -hmm. uh, 
going yeah. with that. And when it comes to now, when it comes to the, when it comes to the core mechanic, because I've often I've often talked about how a lot of games in the in the last thirty years have had a um, a Rome effect with their mechanics. You know, you've heard the expression "all roads lead to Rome." It's it's in the similar vein where there where instead of a bunch of sub mechanics, which was an artifact of the wargaming days of the, of the seventies, there's a particular unifying resolution system, and everything expands out from that. <laughs> so, when it comes to when it comes to gut gun, what would you say is the the proverbial Rome in that system? No, well, it's going to be combat and this kind of thing. I mean, it is mm. a boomer shooter kind of yeah. thing, which is all about combat. So everything leads you back there eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm more referring to what to um how to how di how die are used or if it or if it's diceless and how that and how that's resolved. Um, it is a just a d6, which is only used for it's used for the tables like you're generating stuff, and then it's used for uh, attack roll type stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, a little mechanic tied into that. Um, you have a guts stat. It starts at like a zero, and then you add it to your attack rules whenever you make those. Um, after each episode, your guts stat increases to kind of emulate the idea of you getting good at the game you're playing. Because, you know, whenever you play a boomer shooter, you get a handle of it as you play more of it, you know? Um, you get better at aiming, you get better at dodging, you, you know enemies' attack patterns, you know how to decide who to target first and who to go for last, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and you can't emulate like those twitch reflexes developing very well in tabletop, so I just have the uh, value thing. Um, so you go from occasionally missing shots to eventually getting headshots most of the time by the end of the game. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can certainly get that. Now... When it comes now, um, games games like Doom had had a, had a very interesting um, almost almost position almost position like attitude when it came to how mo how most of the monsters were treated in ter mm -hmm. in terms of each of them having a particular role that interacted with uh, with other monsters some more than others. You know, Pinkies and Specters would always try and get would always try and get in your face to distract you from monsters that were using project they're using projectiles or in the in the worst case scenario using hit scans hi chain gunner mm -hmm. how you doing <laughs> it's, i still i still hate you from all those years with plutonia <laughs> uh, or you or you ha or the or the consistent pattern when it comes to f when it comes to f shooting that say mancubus have or the um homing if the track I won't say homing, but the tracking effect that the um, revenant missiles had. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to enemy design, is are you is that something that you've considered bring, bringing in to an extent of a defined role for each enemy type? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, because that's a big part of. At least, I guess like, that's more of a doom thing than some of the others, um, where you have that kind of like chess like. Uh, spread um but yes no i definitely have that planned because i think that's a big really fun part is figuring out hey like who do i target first what's like the real danger to target and kind of figure out the order of this um it's almost like a puzzle game in a sense yeah. um i think that's fun and enjoyable so yes i have several uh planned i haven't gone through the entire um, enemy list quite yet, but I've I've got my uh, draft ideas for a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of just trying to make it so it's um, a nice split between what can you target and when, and who's going to interact with who, and kind of create that uh, fun little yeah. chess situation. Because um, there's the whole thing where you know you're. Uh, 
your guns all use your health to fire. You don't use ammo. Because that's one of the first things I looked at was like, okay, a lot of these games have you pick up ammo that enemies drop or have around the map or whatever, and ammo is a big part of these. But managing that in tabletop thing is a huge time sink. And you want to feel like you're moving fast, right? You want to be going fast in like a god dang like storm. You don't want to stop to do math about how much ammo you just spent. That sucks. Mm -hmm. um, so I just made HP and ammo the same thing. Um, and certain each enemy type drops a different amount of health once they die, which is automatically healed to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that also plays into who you want to target and when. So it's a mix between like, okay, which guns am I using right now? How much health do I have? How much health do they have? And then what roles are they playing? And all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, the you had also met you had also mentioned things like loot, things like loot and um, traps. I'm guessing with loot, that's e that's either going to be um even even though you had even though you had stated that um, HP and ammo are the same. Are you using some equivalent of shields or ar or armor? I am not. No, right. that's actually a potentially really good idea. So I'm trying to think. The loot section is actually the very next thing I have planned to work on drafting this week. Um, let me read that down real quick. That's that's the thing I'll look into. But for now, loot is mostly just going to be uh, another way to heal because not every player is going to play the chess match, you know, perfectly. And I don't want to make it so you're just completely screwed if you're not able to every single time. So I want to have some extra ways to heal there. I was also considering um, that there's a system in which like the first eight missions of the game each reward you with a new weapon. You know how like boomer shooters and such like sprinkle out their new weapons kind of like that, and by the time you're into the game, you have your whole arsenal. Yeah. Um. So I do that here too. I was thinking like the loot missions might be able to give you some of the weapons earlier potentially. Um. So you get amid that mission instead of after that mission if you get a loot stage, uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the guns, since since you're using. You're you're more or less using the same um, um, ammunition source, and mm -hmm. as well as, as well as a unified approach when it comes to that D, when it comes to that D six roll. Mm -hmm. Within a lot of within a lot of boomer shooters, you have a variety of um, we of weapon effects. You've got some that are hit scan, some that are hit scan, some that are projectile, ones that have different fire different firing speeds, and some that are do that are doing hack together shit like say the BFG. So yeah. how so when it comes to the weapons um what patterns do you have that distinguish some some from the others? Um so the first level of them is they all have different damage, they have different range and they have different uh HP draws mm -hmm. on all of them. Um and then beyond that there's like extra specifics like how many enemies they can target at once. Um, like, for example, a shotgun to be able to hit multiple enemies in their zone. Um, it's a couple ideas. I had an idea for kind of like a trap sort of gun. I guess kind of like a sticky launcher sort of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of things like that. Again, that's in a later stage of the book I have not quite gotten to, so it's mostly just ideas right now for those. I can I can get that. When it comes to now, what, now you had mentioned ranges earlier, but since yes. a, since we're not doing the grid combat affair, it sounded like you're go, that you're doing a um a a broader range zone ap approach. Could you go into yes. what that means? Yes, um, I'm using what's kind of like rage bands, basically. Um, I have this thing that I call the uh, shoot track. It has five bands within it uh, horizontally. Um, you start in band zero and you stay still. You do not move. Um, enemies move across the other four. Um, as you fight and things lose and gain health and whatnot, you move tokens across the band. 
um, left to right horizontally to indicate range, and then uh, vertically up and down to indicate their uh, health states. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you move, you move all the enemy tokens either towards or away from you based on that. Um, they have a whole goofy thing where enemies can despawn. If you, like, you move in a certain way that an enemy is like now on a theoretical band 5, which is not a thing, it only goes up to 4. Um, they'll then enter a despawn pool and then respawn at the end of the round and then do their actions there. Because, um, you know, some of those old games would have a thing where, yes, if you move too far, enemies would despawn because they can't draw them that far away, and then they'd respawn somewhere closer to the player. Um, so kind of also putting that in as both a solution to that potential issue and a fun little uh, way to help emulate the uh, thing I'm going after. Now, when it comes to bosses, bosses is, is something that is has never has always been done kind of iffy in shooters over the years. Um, yes, <laughs> you e you either have some that are some that are annoying, some that are e some that are easy to cheese, cyber demon, or you or you have bosses that are gl that are glorified puzzles, like say the like say the icon of sin or El Escuro. Yeah. Uh, okay, Elisgiro is not ex not exactly a pu a puzzle, but since you since the only way to get the proper ending is find all of his eggs. Rise of the Triad is weird, and I love it. <laughs> but with boss des with boss design, how um how do you approach it so that it's not just a um bullet sink? <laughs> With that one, I think part of it's going to be in the arena design for the bosses. So I mentioned the uh, shoot track and the bands earlier. Part of the reason you do not move um, is so I can have like uh, environmental modifiers, so to speak, and have unique little rooms and such. Um, so several of the boss arenas will have things like a oh, canyon between you and them. They'll have things like some of them might develop as you get through the boss's phases. Uh, I'm thinking about some things depending on like the ads, like the other uh, enemies that spawn during some of them will have some certain interactions with the boss or the boss will spawn their own. Uh, mm -hmm. Trying to consider more puzzle type bosses because this is kind of a puzzle game in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are going to be inherently more interesting, but not in the sense that like the icon of sin type thing. Um, necessarily, but um, something more in line with the way Gut Gun works, where it's like the puzzle of like who do I shoot and when type stuff, but based on uh, the boss's own situations. Again, this is another situation of one that's still in the uh, outline right now, but another chapter I've gotten down to. Yeah, I can, I can, I can certainly get that. Yeah. Now, with that, in, with that in, with that in mind, when it comes to when it comes to master mode, um, mm -hmm. is that more or less is that more or less converting what is a solo game into a um, duet game, one pl one player, Correct. one GM? Correct. That is exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. So I'm get I'm guessing, I'm guessing when it comes to, in a in several games that ha that have some sort that have, um so that have solo leanings when it has when it comes to the enemies, they op they operate under a um a so a soft AI where you're rolling a die, consulting a chart, and that's the enemy's action. Are so, are some of the enemies you have in mind for Gut Gun going to be working in a similar manner, or do you have something that? No, way faster than that. So again, a lot of. Sorry. So it's a, so it's a case of mo of most enemies are going to have like one specific action, and that and that's that. Basically, so every enemy has an action and a movement action. Mm -hmm. um, they do every single round, um, and they just follow those every time 
um, which can be easy to memorize. And again, as a solo player in a game where you want to, things to be fast paced, because this is a fast paced genre we're emulating, uh, that helps a lot. And I'm, it's it's kind of it's kind of funny that you stated you don't move when the when um in do in something like Doom the key, the key phrase that everyone beats into your head is never stop moving. Um, that's not that's not a criticism or anything like that. It's just an amusing um, observation. It is. It's just one of those things that unfortunately I can't emulate as well. Um. So, no, I could have done a grid combat thing, but then there's a whole problem with tracking enemy health values. And I think having the range band, you know, page that also tracks their health is the most elegant way I've found to do that. Um, uh, I can, I can definitely see, I can definitely see that. And since you, since you mentioned wanting, wanting to have a weapon that deals in traps how would traps be set be set up and triggered in this system um so there's already like a couple of traps for uh arenas that can in fact impact either the player or enemies or both um and what that is is they will be set on you'll choose what band they go on to if it was the weapon for example you would set the um it depends on the range of the weapon for that one um, it would be one of the bands in its range, and you'd set a trap on that range. And whenever enemies get in there, it'll either automatically go off, or it'll be something you manually set off. Um, I haven't decided which it is there. For the arena ones that are just there already, I have like explosive barrels in one of the arenas um, that are, if you aim with a weapon that has enough range to shoot this specific band, it will then explode and deal this much damage to everything in that band um so it's kind of stuff like that um i think there's another one that's like a saw trap or something that goes off every other round i believe mm -hmm. so anything standing in that band gets hurt um so it's stuff like that yeah i can i can certainly get that so it, it is a very if else based on the, based on the range band and i suppose in doing so you you end up avo you end up avoid character you end up avoid player characters getting and heroed by stepping into their own traps. Yes, yes, because they can't physically move into them. Or the or the worst trap possible in the build engine, doors. <laughs> yes. I like the I like the build engine, but it, but. <laughs> But everybody knows don't st don't stand around doors because of how they're set up. They'll ki they'll insta kill you. On the other hand, you can always use it against those drone those drones by tricking them into <laughs> into flying headfirst into doors. Oh. It... I'm gonna put a secret level in that's only doors now. <laughs> it's well, your fault. You cannot shame someone who has no shame. <laughs> And secret levels are usually gim are usually gimmicks, anyways. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And that was um one of the other options. Whenever you roll a new room, it's it's made mathematically so it's just d six, right? So it's like a um I think it's what like two for attack, and like two for loot, and then one for a uh, uh a secret. So those are mm -hmm. mathematically less common um yeah. there's a bunch of fun stuff i have planned for those um and another kind of goofy zone i also have uh cheat codes as a planned like thing at the very back um with a bunch of like optional rules and things that tweak the game in goofy ways uh. yeah i could i could i could certainly see that and Given given the whole given the whole loot thing, what I was instantly reminded of is um, heretic. Is Her heretic introduced a I introduced an item system, but had a rule that you that um you could only have one of you could only bring one of each item one of each um item type with you between stages. Except for the wings, mm -hmm. you can't bring the wings with you because they didn't want you to sequence break. Makes sense. Yeah. 
and then that was carried over into Hexen, which mm -hmm. I tried. I try to like Hexen, but the problem is it's too it. The first third of it is too handbreaky. Too handbreaky. Handbreaking is a term that a term that I ended up having to having to utilize because I wanted something that's the opposite of handholding. Um, it's on TV tropes. It's it's known as guy damn it. Hmm. You know where the where a solution is too is too obtuse to um fi to figure out organically unless you have a unless you have a guide or something like that and the seven yeah so a Sierra game type King's Quest has been my whipping boy for this kind of thing <laughs> and that, that will not change and yeah a lot of yeah. adventure games are the worst offenders when it comes to this particular issue. The sheer amount of moon logic that you have to go through to get to get some puzzles is like, how was I supposed to, how was I supposed to know that I had to hit this exact precise pixel if I didn't have a guide? Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I had put de I had used Death Mountain in Zelda Two as an example of this. Because yes, there yes there is there, Death Mountain is not that is not that hard to navigate if you know how to handle things or if you had Nintendo power but at the time I didn't and that and that area has a whole lot of traps and and dead ends and because of the whole 2D thing it's hard to, it's hard to get your bearings you know? yeah so so do not doing the map setup is a blessing in disguise so you don't it means that you're not going to be in those Wolfenstein 3D situations where you just have have corridors that lead into other corridors or se or secrets that lead into other secrets. Or th or the or the whole getting off screen or the whole getting off screen by that by the one mutant who you di who you didn't see. Mm -hmm. Is. There's always one more. No, oh. it's. But, and 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 to be fair, even though Wolfenstein is rever is revered, I always tell people don't marathon it. It can it kind of overstays its welcome. But yeah, that's fair. Now with with that in with that in mind, since you mentioned. Cheat co so you mentioned um, optional rules. I'm guessing would what would one of them be, would one of them be um, options to um, re to put a bit more randomization in into into the for lack of a better term runs. You know, kind kind of kind of go full ra full randomizer with it. Kind of like a Nuzlocke situation almost. Well, Nuz Nuzlocke is a is a randomizer, so. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've thought about a couple ways to do that. Um, like either something that creates like an endless mission what was an idea. Um, there were ideas for a um, something that does randomize what guns you get, type stuff. Um, things about ways to generate arenas because the way arenas work um, in the game normally is. Each episode has um, a table of arenas specific to it, mm -hmm. um, so that way I can introduce enemy types um, more properly. And if the harder enemies show up, the later on you get, you know, yeah. you can change all that stuff. Um, so something about a way to randomize those could be interesting. Um, the cheat codes are again the last chapter, so it's not one I've gotten to. But I just write ideas as I get them. I have ideas for ones to both make things easier and harder. Like one of the ones I thought of, um, I call Tri Immortal, which is just you have three lives for the entire game and that's it. Um, so I think it could be a, kind of a challenge run situation. Um, like the whole, it's also, of course, the, like the whole hardcore mode in MMOs. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Um, of course, the classic golden gun is also a plan, sort of 
one. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun they can do with them. I gotta be careful not to go overboard with it, because it could be really easy to just keep adding in cheat codes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, fee um, content creep is, is certainly a thing that can happen. Yes, and we want to be careful to clamp that down. If things go well, there's potential in the future to do, like, a... Uh, um, an additional like supplement or something at some mm -hmm. point, but that's for the future. Yeah. And with that, with that in mind, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a, not a hard date per se, but a ballpark. Um, I'm kind of looking at like August ish. I can I can certainly see that. And as far as page count, do you see do you see it being around fifty or thir or thirty? Thirty to fifty sounds pretty fair, yeah. Because this is like a zine, so it's yeah. You know, they tend to be in that zone. It's a zine and it's a solo. Neither. I don't. I've. I'm pretty. Sh I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist because I'm pr because I'm pretty sure I'd be I'd be putting my foot in my mouth for that. And I'm not. I'm not that flexible. Oh, but um, but I've I have a hard time, I have a hard time believing that there's like a three hundred page solo R solo RPG out there. It's possible. I mean, Rune's the longest I've seen in Rune's a hundred, which is mm -hmm. a literal third of that. So, yeah. um, and I, and when it comes to that, I'm not I'm not counting ones that can be that can be solo or st or standard um t or standard TTRPGs. That that mm -hmm. does not count. <laughs> yeah. No, or a standard RPG with a with a solo mode. That's cheating. <laughs> I know, I know. Fight to Survive has a solo mode, but it put that as a separate book. And mm -hmm. the big reason I I say so I say solo only for that is, um, Care ne Nethlas from Bla from Black Oath released. Re Got in my hands recently, and that's 227 pages. But that can be solo or or um or multiplayer. So kind of disqualified from from this. <laughs> but yeah, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how Gut Gun ends up developing. And with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness that happens here. Thank you for having me still. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Yes. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>